Hello everyone and welcome back here to a brand new video of Tuning Dutchie. Now, I'm very glad that you are watching my video. Now, I was thinking, you know what, let's make an update video. It's a little time ago and uh, hey, I'm still busy with, uh, with the Cadillac to do some stuff. There are positive news, there is negative news, there are things that we have to improve and there are also things that are, well, not going actually as planned. But that's all what we are talking about in this video. Now before we are getting uh, started, make sure you like this video and don't forget to subscribe on the channel. Because there's, a, there's gonna be a drive POV on your way, guys. This time not just the normal drive POV, which I'm gonna tell later in this video. Anyways guys, I hope you're doing fine. No, I mean, with me everything is fine though. Um, things are actually getting much better. Well, at least for now. Let's hope it stays that way. Um, it has been already for a long time, uh, well, negative news, They're, not everything is, uh, uh, has, been, has been improved, but hey, we, we can't do more than our, just our best. This video is not going to be actually too extreme long, um, I'm going to just go very short and in, in detail what I have done so far on the Cadillac, what is the planning in the future for now and a month or one or two, and on the other hand, I mean, uh, what am I still busy with? Hmm. Which is very nice, though. Now, anyways, um, yeah, well, there's one problem which is very hard to find, and people that are already ha working with cars, and uh, I mean, maybe you have in general just experience with it, but some cars might have leakages, just like mine. So if it's if it's gonna rain or if it's foggy outside. Um, the rain is actually then going inside to the interior and my interior light is actually suddenly going to shut off. Otherwise, I mean, it's not its not just going to shut off, also it's going to break my uh, fuse. Now, that happened already several times. Um, I, I do already have one from two windows closed, which saves me more than 500 bucks. That's actually quite, some, uh, quite a lot of money if we compare that to for 40 to 40 bucks. Um, but I'm very happy that one window is already closed. Um, we have still one more to go, which is the roof window, so the sunroof. Once that one is closed, I don't expect that my fuse is going to blow in anymore. I might try to put a new fuse in there again, because we have already three days where it's actually dry outside without any, any uh, little sign of rain. Now, that's actually very nice. But that's actually the, 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 the smallest amount of problem. I was actually going completely crazy over here. You guys probably know that I had, before this car, a Chevrolet Matisse 3 cylinder 0 to 8 liters, 52 horsepower. I was already crazy with this, with that kind of small car, um, getting it straight piped, putting a supercharger on it, a open air filter and all this kind of uh, things. That was already crazy enough, but on the Cadillac I'm going even more crazier. So I said I'm going to uh, tell that later in the video, which is this moment. The Cadillac is having, has, does have the sound straight coming from the exhaust manifolds. Now, I'm gonna be honest guys, there's no drone inside the interior. It's not that I can tell, hey, it sounds awful. Better said, it actually is sounding very, very nice. It's actually just a big V8 and it's a big V8 sound, just like you wish. Every guy that likes that well, the bum, 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 from a V8, I mean, come on, you guys know that sound. Hey, that's exactly what you hear. But guys, that is loud. God, Jesus. Hey, I mean, yeah, in the past I told you guys it wasn't loud because um, I did some exhaust changes now. But I think this is now way louder than the Matisse. I don't know. Maybe you guys can uh, give me a comment on the next video, which is going to be the drive POV of the car. Um... Uh, that I'm pretty sure guys you're gonna love that I'm pretty sure of that now besides that shortly uh, spoken about the drive and all uh, the interior things also um, I have cleaned up the car a bit um, but over time because there is a, of course a lot of wet spots going on inside the car we also walk the risk that our interior is, of course after three or four years standing still is gonna break so it's slowly a little bit going to break together especially the the leather seats um, they are not worth anything anymore I mean no no one wants to buy it of course because it's completely broken um, 
so it's only good for one thing, which is the trash can. It's actually what it is. We don't have to. We don't have a choice. Otherwise, I mean, there's a, there's only one thing that we can do: is throw it away, make sure every leakage just has, has been solved, and make sure that we buy some new leather seats and make sure that that is not going to get damaged. Besides that, guys, the AMR 500 is still in the car, and I I mean, I fabricated the the. Um, the bracket which I actually used by the AMR 300 on the super of the on um, I refabricated the bracket on the AMR 300 from the Chevrolet Matisse that's what I want to say <laughs> sorry um, and because I refabricated that I mean the V-belt is not gonna go anywhere it still is on the Cadillac so I'm very very glad that we are currently walking into way less risks uh, and problems like uh, on the Chevrolet Matisse. There was a problem already occurring pretty quickly, uh, which is not the case in this moment. I'm very happy with these results. Um, I, I mean, I, I have power steering, I have uh, my uh, supercharger active again. Um, now the only thing would I, what I don't have is boost. Now the the reason behind that is pretty simple. It's just because the ECM has static values, and if it's if, if it has static values, which means it's it's not going to change. It stays that way. Which means if there is going to more air inside the uh, inside inside the air cleaner, which uh, goes into the combustion chamber, there's not going to be more fuel. Which is in the normal cars like nowadays, uh, like, like let's say if you are driving a Ford Mustang from 2005, yeah, I mean, if you're going to put a very small supercharger in there, yeah, I mean, it definitely can put some uh, little, little bit more fuel in there. But with these old cars with a static value and old ECU, that's not going to work like that. Now, besides the AMR 300 and AMR 500, I mean, currently we have the AMR 500 without boost on the Cadillac. And I still need to f figure out how I can get my hands on a V-Belt pulley, which is actually 125% uh, oversized, and so in total, uh, V-Belt for the AMR 300, so I can connect both superchargers in the Cadillac. Yeah, that's actually quite insane, I know, and that's exactly what I want to. So it's definitely going to sound unique, uh, dual uh, supercharger, or twin supercharger setup, it's gonna, definitely going to be nice. Otherwise, guys, I'm still also looking not just to to repair stuff. Um, now, I mean, with the exhaust, I'm definitely not repairing stuff. I'm just destroying stuff, but that's not a problem. That's like, that's actually a fun a fun thing. I mean, that's for me fun just to drive it. I like it, and that's very important if you have a car, of course. But what I want what I want to um, what I want to say over here, most important thing where I'm looking at right now is a two barrel carburetor or a four barrel carburetor. You guys probably already know that two barrel has more high end torque but can deliver less horsepower, but high, a four barrel can actually deliver more horsepower but low end torque. Now I'm a high high RPM person, so that that's definitely what you guys are gonna hear in the next video and also the videos after that. I like that; it's my thing. Um, yeah, I mean. I just hope that I can get my hands on a good four, a four barrel Holy, Holy 500 CFM. Um, but the biggest problem over here is not the Holy. The biggest problem is getting a Cadillac 368 four barrel single plane manifold. That's going to be the biggest issue. Um, that was only in the rear wheel drive in 1981 uh, Cadillac Seville's. Um, it's not very well positive at this moment because the normal 1980 Cadillacs 368s they don't have uh, uh, those four barrel uh, intake plenums so that's a little bummer um, I have such on the internet and uh, I cannot find it so if you guys know someone that has it someone that wants to get in contact with me if, I, if they want to sell it then I then let me know that in the comment section below so I can get, get in contact with you and hey I mean uh, you guys will definitely help me out with that but also you will help yourself because uh, we will definitely gonna make nice content with that because as soon as I'm gonna put a carburetor on there instead of a shitty throttle body and instead of a shitty throttle body which is actually well all electric and all that now that's not well the thing we want you know we all we just want to want a carbureted engine that you can actually modify you can put some main other main jets in there get some more fuel in there and hey then I can connect also the superchargers so that's actually where it's going about. So again, if you know someone that has a four-barrel Cadillac 368 
single plenum or dual plenum intake, then let me know that and uh, let me know that in the comment section below and maybe we'll we get in contact. So yeah, then we can actually make some nice content further here on the channel. Otherwise, I'm still gonna keep that, uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, if, as soon as I see it, then I'm definitely gonna buy it. Also, otherwise, guys, I mean, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen my red uh, uh, amplifier, but hey, my amplifier at this moment, my goodness, I mean, uh, that's actually uh, quite huge. So that's my new amplifier which I got. That's a GTA 1100 from GBL. So GTO. 6000 with that's a type number it's 1100 watts rms and my previous one was only 450 so that's actually very good because my subwoofer in my car uh, is pretty heavy so that's that's always nice yeah well guys um that's actually very that's actually that already um i mean i'm still busy and also the uh, Special tests are still not completed. I'm still busy with the fog, uh, getting getting rid of the fog in the, in the tail lights. I already put some new uh, uh, rubber seals in there. Did not help a little thing, not just a little bit. So I am pretty sure this was not the seals. This is something else. What it is, I don't know. But I, it's something definitely we have to fix. So I am planning to take the tail lights out, take it upstairs, and make sure it's waterproof. So I'm gonna make some uh, a little bath for that for that little tiny thing, and make sure that it's completely waterproof. Now, um, once I know where the leak is, then I'm gonna fix that. Um, but for now, I should take it out uh, first. Also, soon if we are have if we are having the special desk, we have to uh, well uh, make the exhaust longer and of course ex uh, uh, closed, so we will get. Uh, just for a short limited time back out of the of the on the back of the car again so that's only for that day after that's done i mean then the, uh, the exhaust is going to be removed again yeah well uh, i also deleted the exhaust uh, riser so the heat riser because that was also uh, that one was closed which is going to hold uh, hold some exhaust gases inside the exhaust manifold which is actually getting a lot but really a lot of back pressure and that's definitely not good for your engine you can actually blow your engine up with that especially if you drive like an idiot like me yeah i'm gonna be honest i'm i'm just saying that but uh yeah guys i mean uh, that's actually a little update that i got for you now now um in the meantime i'm also busy with setting up again work um this time i'm the boss i would say but not too much into detail um so that it might it might be possible that it's gonna take little time I, I don't know how much I, I hope in a few days uh, that I can make the drive POV for you guys well, of course when I have a lot of enough gasoline in the car so I can make the drive POV nice and normally um, which you guys can really enjoy a nice V8 sound so I would definitely say guys check in next video on the drive POV with me and hey let's let us enjoy that nice V8 368 block I mean come on I love it I think everyone loves it now Anyways guys, this was Tuning Dachi. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to Discord, uh, join my Discord server, you're all welcome. And don't forget, of course, if you want to donate to, to the channel, that would be perfect. You don't have to, you can. If you're going to donate, you're not going to help yourself, you're not going to help me, but you're going you're gonna to help the complete community because the money is going to be used for content improvements. So that means better videos, better quality, better camera, better microphone, etc. So also, uh, if you want to have a special video and all that, you can also do that. You can also do that for uh, getting parts and all that. You know, everything is actually possible. So uh, I would be pleased if that's going to happen any, uh, uh, someday. But uh, guys, for now, I would say I see you guys the next time. And as always, tune hard, race well. This was Tuning Dachi, and I'm going to sign off. See you guys the next video. Thanks for watching.